they played up the home court crowd. In a physical inside game, shut San Antonio down. And the Spurs seemed defeated as the Trailblazers took a commanding 2-0 lead. In game three, the Trailblazers found themselves in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. David dominated, and the Spurs showed no mercy, exacting their revenge. It was Portland's turn for frustration, as San Antonio coasted in for the easy win. San Antonio is the site of another pretty famous homestand, but remembering the Alamo just goes to show that home isn't always the safest place to be. Texas for Western Conference playoff action this afternoon. Game four of the series between the Portland Trailblazers and the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs looking to pull even with Portland, and they, of course, will take on the winner of that series between the Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to noisy San Antonio, Texas, and to NBA playoff action here on CBS. I'm Greg Gumbel. Another sellout crowd on hand, which is just fine with the San Antonio Spurs because they perform well in front of sellout crowds, 19 and 2 this year, going into today's game. I'm joined, as usual, by Quinn Buckner. And Quinn, this series has gone the way of the most opportunistic team. The first two games in Portland, the Blazers were the ones who took advantage of their chances. Well, that's clearly been the case, Greg. And what it seems is the home cooking has helped out a lot. I thought Portland did a good job just taking advantage, causing some steals, and then being able to take advantage of the steals I thought was so critical for them. Let's take a look show you exactly what we mean. As far as the turnovers are concerned, points off of the turnovers, the Blazers dominated in the first two games, and it showed on the court. Well, they were just active. They were able to get out and make some things happen, and when you do that, good things will happen for you. For example, Terry Porter and Clyde Drexler are the two players that were circled, and when they get going, now they get some help, and it gets you fast make basket. That's why steals are important as a turnover. Now that was the first two games. Game three here Thursday night, the Spurs turned things around with the points off turnovers and as a result the game turned around. Well I thought they did a better job. The home cooking gave them some alertness, some anticipation and what they started to do was the little thing. Rod Strickland became alert protecting the inside as did all the Spurs and that's what became critical for them. The fact that they stayed alert and if you get alert, you get a steal on the one side and then you're back in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood on the other. Yes, yeah, speaking of Mr. Robinson, 28 points in that Game 3 victory Thursday. He's not the only problem facing Portland this afternoon, though. For more, let's go to Andrea Joyce. Andrea. Craig Portland was one of the healthiest teams in the NBA during the regular season, but that changed in the playoffs. The latest victim, Wayne Cooper, he is suffering from back spasms. Now, he did dress for today's game, but about a half an hour ago, he went back to the locker room and put back on his street clothes, so he will not play today. As far as the Spurs are concerned, I was in the locker room for Larry Brown's pregame Playoff fever, noisy crowd. Starting lineups in the opening tip when we come back to San Antonio after this. CBS Sports coverage of the 1990 NBA playoffs is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? First Brands Corporation, maker of STP oil treatment and son of a gun protector. And by Miller Lights Tour Delight, the race to win America's favorite light beer. As the Tour de Light rolls across America, someone else has joined the race to win America's favorite light beer, Miller Light. They have struggled up the Rockies where they pulled out all the stops. <laughs> yes, these guys would not pump pedals cross country for just any beer. Only the less filling beer that really tastes great, Miller Light. Yo, what are you? I took a shortcut. St. Louis. All right. Halfway there. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it with Son of a Gun from STP. Shoot the dash, seats, tires, and roof. Son of a Gun protected. Man, what a difference. <laughs>
You don't have to be crazy about home projects to buy a Black & Decker cordless screwdriver or cordless screwdriver plus. You just have to have a screw loose. The promises found in a showroom catalog are only as good as the quality found in the car itself. That's why at Ford, we've continuously refined one of America's top-selling cars, Ford Temple, to its highest quality level ever. It's quality you can feel at a price they can't touch. Ford Temple. You don't have to be well-to-do to do it well. Now get 7.9 financing for up to 48 months or up to $900 cash bonus on Ford Tempo. You bet we're finicky. At Price Fister, when we make a faucet, we make it fit for a king. So we start with a foundation of solid brass inside, which makes it so durable, it's flat out terrific. Then we finish it to a fairly well outside and price it to please the frugal in everyone. Price Fister, the fabulous faucet with a funny name. They are always ready for action here in San Antonio. Welcome back to the Hemisphere Arena, everyone. Here are the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. For the Blazers, they will go with Buck Williams and Jerome Kersey up front. The veteran backcourt duo of Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter. And the rookie Cliff Robinson gets the start in the middle. And the Blazers are coached by Rick Adelman, who is completing his first full year as head coach of the Blazers. For San Antonio, their starting lineup, Terry Cummings, and alongside him, the rookie from Arizona, Sean Elliott, in the backcourt. Willie Anderson in his second year out of Georgia, and Rod Strickland, and in the middle, the NBA's rookie of the year, David Robinson. And the Spurs are coached by Larry Brown. Officials for this afternoon's game, Hugh Evans, Dick Bavetta, and Steve Jabby, who will toss it among the Robinsons. Cliff, number three, and Dark for Portland, David, number 50, in white for San Antonio. And immediately up to Clyde Drexler. And Drexler makes the first bucket of the game an emphatic one. Well, it, it, the game is going to be an emotional game because now that San Antonio is back, they are going to be playing high emotions, and we just saw a little bit of that. And I can expect, because of last week, last game on Thursday, that you see Portland play at a higher level than they did last time out. Strickland with the first turnover of the game on the travel. Here's Buck Williams, guarded by Terry Cummings. Williams to the left hand. And quickly, the Blazers are out to a 4-0 lead. Willie Anderson, far side. Portland back in a hurry. This is Terry Porter. Makes the jumper, gets into the lane, and got tied up, and there's a turnover. Back comes Anderson. Cummings gives it back to Anderson, and back to Cummings. He put it up. You can see that San Antonio's playing with the emotion. Willie Anderson is really a key for them. If he can get off the snide, he scored a pass, he's got a, a assist, that's when he plays well. Terry Porter comes back with the three-pointer. And Porter, who is averaging over 20 points a game in this playoff season thus far, has Portland on top by three. Got to see San Antonio go inside with Cliff Robinson guarding David Robinson. You have to think the advantage of San Antonio. Rod Strickland's shot is off, rebounded by Cliff Robinson, who got the position on David. 7-4 Portland. Drexler on Anderson. Jerome Kersey. Kersey's two-pointer makes it 9-4 Blazers. And that makes Jerome Kersey tough and then the Trail Blazers because Kersey is really a slasher driver to the basket. He makes his jump shot. You've got to come out and guard him. We are waiting to see if this will be as emotional a game as was Thursday night's San Antonio victory. 121 to 98. Robinson tied up and fouled. Kersey thinks he got all ball. Dick Bavetta thought otherwise, and Robinson will shoot two. The, the key for Portland is when David Robinson gets the ball first, get him off the block, and then if he takes a dribble, go down and give help, as you see Cliff Robinson, as well as Jerome Kersey, went to double team. 
What a game this young man had Thursday night when the Spurs needed to come back and needed a victory. He had 28 points, 8 rebounds, 8 blocked shots. And that doesn't say how many shots he intimidated because of the 8 blocks, bro. Then Robinson's shot is off the mark. Coming went to the board, lost it out of bounds, but it still belongs to the Spurs. In two years here in San Antonio, Larry Brown with 78 wins and 89 losses. And, and what a turnaround from last year's season of 21 and 61. Midwest Division champions finishing a game ahead of the Utah Jazz. Top of the key, Anderson. Around and out, Buck Williams rebound. Baseline almost turned over. Drexler on the nice pass inside Drexler. from Cliff Robinson. Well, that's an example of just hustling to the ball. And if you see those plays keep going to Portland's side, that's when they, I think they have a distinct advantage. They're quicker to the basketball. Five-point lead for the Blazers. Nine minutes to play. And that foul is on Cliff Robinson, number three. And that's the second foul on Robinson. Well, that puts Rick Adelman in a tough spot, particularly if Robinson gets his third in light of the fact that Wayne Cooper is not dressed and will not play, so they'll have to go to the young Mark Bryant to take Robinson's place. David Robinson. And it's 11 to 8, Portland. And the Blazers turn it over. Turnovers played a big part in the Spurs' victory on Thursday night. You Turned got the ball over 14 times to 23 for the Blazers. Hey, you got to get the ball into Robinson. With Cliff Robinson with three, five, two fouls, you've got to get the ball to him. Strickland recovers, goes back up, and a foul is on Portland. That foul is on Buck Williams. That's number one on Buck. Playing with the goggles, protecting the eye that was cracked. The bone around the eye was cracked in the playoff series against Dallas. And Buck says he's going to wear those goggles forever now. You know, and I think that's a, a good choice. I, he and I were talking before the game, it was just you were. And I think in light of the fact that you play this game and elbows just fly, you need to protect your eyes. And he said he decided he's going to wear them the rest of his career. Seven to nine, Portland's lead is two with 8.25 to play. Down low, Cliff Robinson on the baseline with the reverse. Uh, nice move because he had David Robinson on the left side. Bryant took it to the right to protect uh, the shot from being blocked. Here's Willie Anderson going to put it up. Portland going to force it back down again in a hurry. Theirs is a two-point lead. Long-range shot by Clyde Drexler. Drexler has seven of Portland 16. Strickland down the lane, and it's slapped away. Cummings for three. And here comes Kersey. Strickland going for the steal, didn't get it. Curse it from outside. Too long. Whistle blows, and the foul will go against the Spurs. You saw Buck, Elliott, Buck Williams doing what he does best. He got good position in there, but the play actually got started when Rod Strickland made a, a bad lead here going for the ball, and then Buck Williams going for the glass, because he knows Jerome Curse is going to shoot him. You saw the identical 16-11 score. Lakers on top of Phoenix. Corner, quarter, three-pointer. And Strickland has the rebound. Strickland was a rebound shy of a triple-double here Thursday night. Anderson on the drive. This didn't fall. Quarter, penetrating, rejected by Cummings, out of bounds to Portland. And the clock has stopped with 6.50 to play. Five-point Portland lead. Well, Terry Porter tries to catch the defense, and Terry Cummins with his back turn. But you see, this is a much more aggressive Spurs team. They come in, make sure Terry Porter doesn't get it down. 
insurance needs because I know how much the right life insurance means to me and my family. You take pride in your life, so do we. Going above and beyond is our policy. The right, the prudential above and beyond. You want to protect your children from harm, but can they protect themselves? Don't let him move. I'll go call for help. A salute to Safe Kids Week on Rescue 911, Tuesday. 6.50 to play, first period, Portland with a five-point lead on San Antonio, and uh, as Quinn mentioned at the beginning, it has been home cooking in this series so far, which began in Portland in game one. Portland knocking off San Antonio as Jerome Kersey contributed 25 points and 16 rebounds, nine of them offensive as he got the inside game clicking. And then in game two, it was 122 to 112. The Trailblazers leading the way Terry Porter, who had 27 points, seven assists, and five steals. But Thursday night, it was the David Robinson show. 28 points, eight rebounds, eight block shots. The high-flying David Robinson, perhaps most amazingly, had just one turnover in 37 minutes of action. It was clearly his game. Well, it was his great game, Greg, but you got to credit his teammates. I thought they played with a sense of commitment, and that's the only way you win championships, by just digging down and making it happen. That's what the Spurs did. This is Porter. Porter puts it up and nails it. And a mismatch with Terry Cummings, and was going to take Terry to the basket, decided to pull up for the J, knock it down. 18-11. to 11. Portland with the lead. Cummings. Four for Cummings. Cummings kicking that one out of bounds and Portland retains possession. There is TC, the Longtime Milwaukee Buck who came over and made a difference here in San Antonio. Brought some experience to a young basketball club, and when you talk to the team, they'll say David Robinson helped, but they'll tell you Terry Cummings gave them the experience they really needed to have. Drexler going head up with Cummings and puts it up over him. Well, he's got an intent look on his face. It does Drexler, and he's going to take it at whoever guards him. Spurs back in a hurry, down 7, 20-13. And 5.45 for the first quarter. Cummings puts it up again. Line drive shot. Loose ball foul goes against Sean Elliott. Uh, Greg, I'll tell you what San Antonio is missing. is Rod Strickland, in addition to having a triple-double, had 17 assists. To, right now, he has no assists. And you notice the Spurs are shooting jump shots. You don't get many fouls called for you when you're shooting jump shots. Precisely the problem Portland had Thursday night in their loss. They were shooting jump shots, not penetrating at all. Shot clock at 10, and Porter. Back to Drexler, who's gonna drive the lane. Oh, Drexler. On everybody. <laughs> Clyde Drexler has 11 of 22 Portland points. The, the, the delay is about a delay a game call against Clyde. He, he dunked the ball, and then he hit it with his hand so the fast break wouldn't go the other way. 15 to play, first quarter, 22-13, Trailblazers. Down. 
down low. That one is a foul on Mark Bryant. Here are the Portland Trailblazers very much having a problem with David Robinson as you look at Clyde Drexler down the lane. That's a major league move, and then there's the slap out of bounds. Yeah, the ball just came at him, so he wanted to make sure they run. But here's Portland trying to take on David Robinson without a true center available to them, Quinn. Well, I think it's important for San Antonio to get David Robinson the ball for the reason you just cited. Portland really doesn't have a true center in the game. Sean Elliott overshoots everything. Porter comes back. Out of bounds. Turnover goes over to San Antonio. Spurs fans wanting a little more action than they've seen. Robinson in the lane. Offensive foul. Fifteen thousand nine hundred and ten on hand here at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner. 22, 13, 13, Portland is leading San Antonio. Great, Portland has done a good job, I think, of staying active, which I didn't think they did in uh, game three. And that's what's made it so tough for San Antonio. Mark Bryant. Got in the way. Shot is blocked, and here comes the Spurs. And Anderson will slow it down. Good defensive transition by Portland to stop that fast break. Elliott. Good pass by Robinson. Great shot by Elliott. Elliott's first basket of the game. 22-15. Porter comes right back. Game clock down to 3:45. Sean Elliott open. And Terry Cummings. <laughs> it was very blatant. It was I mean, funny how the neighborhood just cleared out. You saw it earlier here on CBS. Patrick Ewing leading the Knicks to the 111-103 win over Detroit. Meanwhile, in Phoenix in the first quarter, the Laker lead over Phoenix is four. That series tied at a game apiece. Here, Portland leads the series two games to one. They lead the game 24-15 with three and a half to play first quarter. Buck Williams. Pass cross court, picked off by Robinson. Three on two. Strickland to Cummings. Porter throws up a prayer. Loose ball picked off by Mark Bryant, and the Blazers will start it over again. Well, that's what they've done in the game that they won. Portland gets just about all the loose balls. There's a rejection by Robinson, and look at him run the court. Strickland down the lane. Robinson follows, doesn't go, and that foul is against Rod Strickland. We don't lack for action. 2.42 to play. First quarter, it's a seven-point Portland lead. Welcome to the 90s, and welcome to a way to explore new horizons. Introducing the new four-door Explorer from Ford. Explore more total room for people and cargo than any competitor. Explore its exclusive push-button four-wheel drive. Explore its aerodynamic design. Discover new four-door Explorer from Ford. Have you driven a Ford lately? Our bug business had never been better. So one day we just looked at each other and knew it was time to go public. When are we going to hear? It takes time. Off to New York, guys. This is the shop of Sansat Pasar, a thriving establishment on the outskirts of Bangkok. Unlike other international executives, he has no phone system, no computers, not even a fax machine. He does.
has, however, enjoy one modern and efficient service nearly 4 billion people in more than 180 countries today can take for granted. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Monday, an unauthorized biography of John Gotti, the man the government calls the most powerful criminal in the United States, on Face to Face with Connie Chung Monday. Back in San Antonio, the Portland Trailblazers have a seven-point lead in the first period. One of the problems the Spurs have had in this series is with the matchup at small forward. Early in the series, Jerome Kersey has been engaging in a verbal psychological warfare against Sean Elliott, constantly reminding him and dogging him about being a rookie. Well, as it turns out, Sean Elliott also has a little inside, inner sight game going on of his own. If you look closely, you will notice that he wears two different styles of basketball shoes. He blew out a shoe in December, changed it, and ever since then feels like he plays better with the mismatched pair. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but I think Quinn would probably agree in a series like this one, you take any psychological edge you can get. Yeah, Andrew, you do take any psychological edge you can get. And, and Sean Elliott thinks that he's got it covered by the shoes. Shoes don't make the players, Sean. I hate to tell you that. <laughs> well, neither one of them claims any bragging rights this afternoon. Each has two points on the board. Shot clock at 10. Kersey has Elliott in the air and puts it up. Doesn't go. Mark Bryant with the rebound. So Kersey made the move. Elliott went for it, but he didn't get the shot down. Drexler, baseline. And Clyde Drexler has brought it with him to the arena oh, he, today. He's on a mission today. To, I mean, Portland's still shooting jump shots, and they've got a nine-point lead here. But I said it before. If, if you don't get driving from Strickland to dish the ball off, I think you really hurt your club if you're San Antonio. Cummings. Eight points for Cummings. 26-19, and we're under two minutes for the quarter. Drexler inside. Kersey works his way in. See, it, they have, Portland, I think, has a, a couple of mismatches not, that they can take advantage of. One is Jerome Kersey on the rookie Sean Elliott, and the other is, I think, Clyde Drexler has the ability to take Willie Anderson and take both of them out of the game. Cummings to the baseline as it batted back at him. Shot clock is at eight, and that foul is on Drexler. That's number one on Drexler. Elliott and Cummings will relax. David Wingate, number 25, into the game for San Antonio, as is Frank Rikowski. Well, you got Wingate in the game. That's a defensive player that Rick Adelman has to be concerned about because now you've got to put Wingate. He can guard Clyde Drexler. Now, with Rikowski, that's the physical presence that I really think that San Antonio has missed a good part of the first quarter here. Somebody that can get in there and bang, be willing to give their bodies up. Drexler shot is off, Anderson rebounds, and the Spurs are running. Now Wingate will wait. Robinson. Missed the short pop, Porter comes back. Under a minute to play, 50 seconds, in fact, Porter all the way in, and the offensive foul is on Terry Porter. Well, Wingate was there, there was no question about it, but David Robinson was what forced Terry Porter to take that drive because Robinson was away from the basket. You see on the left side of your screen, that's David Robinson. Clearly, David Wingate is there. Five turnovers by the Trailblazers this afternoon to two for the Spurs. Robinson. They've got to take advantage of that mismatch. David Robinson is, you know, five inches taller than uh, Bryant. He's strong and quick. You've got to get him the ball down there on the block. Six points for David Robinson. San Antonio moves to within five. Half a minute to play. First quarter. Porter. And the whistle blew before that shot was off. Nick Bavetta says the foul is on David Robinson, and that's number two on the rookie center.
This is something that has been significant in this game. The games here, the backcourt scoring. You see Portland well ahead, 20 to 5. Now they, they've got a five point lead. But Willie Anderson took to heart the fact that all the papers were saying that Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter were outplaying Strickland and, and Anderson. So they made a concerted effort to try to get back into it. They have not done it as of today. Quinn, as you and I discussed, it, and in watching the games, it did not appear that Willie Anderson was having an outstanding playoff series, yet he comes in this afternoon averaging almost 20 points a game in the playoffs. Yeah, Greg, but what he, he's not doing is he's not getting his hands on the ball, getting fast breaks. People get excited when he gets his dunks and things of that nature. First of all, they played two games in Portland. Second of all, Willie Anderson just hasn't done enough of that. Buck Williams makes it a 30-23 to 23 lead for Portland. A little three-quarter court trap here by Portland. Shot clock at 13, just ahead of the game clock. Strickland down the lane. Nice move, Rod Strickland. With David Robinson out of the game, it opens up the middle, and that's where uh, uh, he's at his best. Strickland's Drexler at his best. and the foul. And that's just something that shouldn't happen in the closing seconds of the quarter. Except there was a press on, and all of a sudden, Willie Anderson took a bad gamble, and then you got Clyde Drexler going to the basket. So anytime there's a press, you attack the basket. Willie Anderson just made a bad gamble. Yeah. Seven-tenths of a second showing on the clock for the quarter. And it's been a Clyde Drexler show as Willie Anderson tosses it at the buzzer, and this is it. Clyde Drexler, outstanding with 16 points and a couple of blocked shots. He has led Portland to a 33-25 lead. We'll be back for the second quarter in a moment. The Tour de Light is rolling across America. Coming to your town with lots of instant prizes. If a Miller Lite biker spots you holding a Miller Lite, you can win up to $10,000 and a Raleigh bicycle. So pick up the less filling beer that really tastes great, and you might pick up $10,000 as the Tour de Light races across America. The next time your car is in the shop, remember, Fram oil filters protect your engine better because they stop more dirt the first time through than any other filter. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. Now it eats these things, all right? It opens its mouth and in it goes. Peter, no TV till you've had your breakfast. Now it eats these things, all right? Peter! Well, don't worry, Mr. Bowen, you're covered. Thank you. It's automatic when you use the American Express card. Lost, stolen, or damaged, a way to protect the things you buy. If it makes you nervous to have someone my size in your face, now you know how your kid feels when you're in his. CBS Sports coverage of the 1990 NBA playoffs is sponsored by United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Allstate for home, auto, life, and business insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge. Oh, it's only 90 degrees or so here in San Antonio today. Welcome back, everyone. Portland leading San Antonio 33-25 as we start the second quarter. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner and Andrea Joyce as the 1990 NBA playoffs continue here on CBS. Last night, in case you missed it, Philadelphia withstood a late Chicago Bulls rally. Charles Barkley, 34 points and 20 boards as Philadelphia won its first in that series. Chicago still leads it two games to one. 
earlier today, Patrick Ewing, 45 points and 13 boards as the Knicks snapped the Pistons' 12-game winning streak, 111 to 103. So out east, Detroit now leads it two games to one, as does Chicago. Right now, let's go to Andrea Joyce. Andrea. Craig, I just came out of the Portland locker room, and Mike Shaminsky, the trainer, is taping up Mark Bryant's right ankle. He's got a slight ankle sprain, but he'll be back in the game. Back to you guys. All right, Andrea, thanks. Meanwhile, Caldwell Jones is into the lineup for the San Antonio Spurs. Wingate. But it, David Wingate is somebody that's really benefited from having Larry Brown. Larry gives people confidence as a coach, and he's done a good job with Wingate, because Wingate's primarily defensive. Cliff Robinson trying to establish position on Caldwell Jones, lost it out of bounds. Drazen Petrovic into the lineup for Portland, as is Danny Young. Petrovic, primarily an offensive player, can come off picks and stick it. Danny Young giving Terry Porter just a little break. Terry Cummings works his way inside off the glass. No rebound out to Strickland. Burkowski puts it up. And Petrovic has the rebound. Down low, Robinson. Left handed shot up short. Loose ball. Here comes Strickland. open in the corner. Frank Krakowski has had an outstanding playoff series, averaging almost 11 points a game, and better yet for Larry Brown, almost six rebounds a game. Frank, I think he's been their most consistent player. He's banged, he got 20 points in the first game, but he's just physical presence, and particularly his rebounding that I think has been the most beneficial for the Spurs. Spurs close to within four, 33-29. Kersey. Caldwell Jones has the rebound for San Antonio. Spurs looking to inch even closer. Cummings off the pick. That's his favorite direction, Greg. If Terry Cummings goes left, he's a tough player right there. That's what he wanted to do. Rick Adelman says, hold on, we have to talk about this. 9.57 to play. And the Spurs have cut it to two. With more interior room and cargo capacity than a compact Nissan, Toyota, Chevy S10, or Ford Ranger, the mid-sized Dodge Dakota Club Cab leaves the competition flat. Japanese or American, a sizable advantage no matter how you stack them. Now, get up to $2,000 cash back on selected trucks. Time for the All-State Good Hands Award. Based on his total steals, rebounds, and assist-to-turnover ratio throughout the regular season, Darrell Walker had the best hands in the NBA. And this slick steal and breakaway layup is just one reason we can say, Good Hands, Darrell. That's the All-State Good Hands Award. And remember, you're in good hands with All-State, a member of the Sears Financial Network. If you've got yourself a car, and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with All-State Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage, another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Spur Arena, the Spurs have pulled to within two in the second quarter. Before Thursday night's game, David Robinson received the NBA's Pivotal Player Award. His family was on hand for the ceremony. The award goes to the player the computer says has helped his team the most throughout the regular season. And David's uh, parents, Ambrose and Frida, are here again today. It looked like you guys might have been 
prouder of that or felt more about that award than he did the other night? We're very proud of it, but uh, David's his own worst critic, so you're going to see some things out of David you haven't seen in a while, and that's saying something. Now, I know that he really doesn't talk very much at all before a game, at least not to us. What did he have to say to you this morning? He didn't say anything to me this morning. I haven't talked to him since yesterday. Well, it's nice to know that he doesn't talk to you either. All right, let's go back over to Greg. And Greg, can you say proud parents? <laughs> And David Robinson, not surprisingly, named today to the NBA's all-rookie team. There's a whistle. As we look at Larry Brown, who's seen the Spurs climb in. Quinn, there's a reason why the Spurs are back in this game. Well, because Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter, two of the top three leading scorers on Portland, are sitting on the bench, and they haven't been able to generate any offense. Petrovic. Uh, Drazen Pestovic is a guy that he's much better shooting it off the pick, but in the game on Thursday, he came off and shot some shots like that. That'll be a big help for Portland to get some offense from somebody other than their normal stars. Pestovic, the rookie from Yugoslavia. And there are some bodies flying down low. Foul is going to be, looks like, on Petrovic. Well, it's, it's very active in there, and you see Drazen, he's got Wingay hooked, and then he tries to pull him, and then after that, but Fisher really caught the first part of the thing, and he missed the second part, which is, could have been considered a foul on Wingay. You mean Buster Douglas? 35-31 <laughs> oh. Blazers coming from outside again. Front rim, no. Loose ball. That's on Petrovic. Petrovic hooked Wingate is nailed with a second foul in about 15 seconds. Drazen is a first-year player in the in NBA, but in Europe and in the international competition, they do those little kind of tricks all the time, so I'm not as surprised to see him try what we consider veteran tricks, like holding around the waist a little bit. Burkowski into the lane. Two-point game again. Burkowski has four. Buck Williams calling for the ball. Danny Young now. And Petrovic takes the three, working his way inside and got it off and was fouled. You know, maybe those moves are things that Drazen can get away with at home because uh, his dad's the local chief of police in his hometown. <laughs> yeah, that would help. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, this young man can score. He averaged 26 points a game in Europe, so he's very capable of scoring. He just hadn't played against these kind of athletes before. Willie Anderson into the lineup for Terry Cummings. And Johnny Moore, number 00, is into the lineup as well for San Antonio. Johnny Moore comes in to give a break to, to Rod Strickland. And Willie Anderson giving Terry uh, the same thing. But what's interesting is David Robinson in, in the game, and, and they still, San Antonio, is back in the contest. So you can expect to see a fresh Robinson very active when he comes back in. Portland by three, 840 to play first tap. Johnny Moore, out of control, lost it. Young, Petrovic, and Kersey open for the top. Tap up, and Cliff Robinson high in the air for the board. That's some of the things that the 6'10 Cliff Robinson can do. Quick to the ball, great jumper. You've got to put a body on him. Blazers lead back to five. Willie Anderson off the pick. And the whistle blows down low. This is on Buck Williams. Buck cannot believe it, and just double dribbled his goggles on the baseline. But the interesting thing, Buck is complaining about it, but Frank Bukowski is the guy that gets Buck in position for this whole thing, and that's why I said Frank Bukowski is so important, because he'll put a body on you and make you do things like he just did with Buck Williams. Two personals on Buck, and an enraged Williams goes to the bench. Mark Bryant back from the locker room and back into the lineup. Clock down to eight. Johnny Moore in a bind in the corner. Out of bounds. Five, uh, Belongs to San Antonio. They'll have five seconds to get a shot off. Well, Greg, with no Terry Cummings and David Robinson out on the court now, San Antonio really doesn't have a one-on-one -on -one player that can create the shots. That's why they're hurting offensively. Inside of Caldwell Jones, who put it up and in. Thirty-eight, thirty-five, Portland. 
Kessler back into the game for the Blazers. Petrovic, and now Robinson, rejected by Jones. Three on one, Anderson blocked by Whoa. Kessler. Whoa! <laughs> Is Clyde Drexler pumped or what? What a magnificent defensive play by Clyde Drexler. I, I want to tell you, now this is a great block here by Caldwell Jones to let him know the old man can still get after it a little bit. But going back on the other end, you can see Clyde Drexler timing his steps and you see the visual contact. Oh boy, he just threw that one back. That's three block shots for Clyde Drexler here this afternoon. None of them looked as good as that one though, Gray. <laughs> David Robinson back. Turn around. Eight points for David Robinson. 38-37. Back comes Drexler in a hurry. Drexler has 18 of Portland's 40 points. The lob for Robinson. And he's fouled and he'll go to the line. Six minutes, 56 seconds to play here in the second quarter. When Robinson will go to the line when he comes back. Clyde Drexler's got his mind made up. Now he shoots this thing over Caldwell Jones. Schick, the official razor of the NBA, presents Close Shave. In Red Auerbach's final season as coach, the Celtics are tested to the limit by Oscar Robertson and the Cincinnati Royals. Each team wins twice on the road, but the final game is played in Boston. In a classic example of team play, the Celtics win a close shave fifth game and begin their quest for an eighth consecutive NBA crown. Let me get this straight. You're Jim? Yeah, people mix us up a lot. I'm John. He's Jim. Mr. Three-Point Shooter used to miss three points on his face until I got him to shave with a slim twin disposable. I'm John. It has a narrow head. Just like our little brother Mike. <laughs> so you can shave. Hard to reach places. It's got a special bar to keep the blades clean. I thought he was John. The slim twin disposable reaches every place on every face. Who are you? I'm the guy with the narrow head. <laughs> <laughs> From Schick. What's your first priority? Miss Crowley. Well, I'm assuming there's product in the pipeline, so... Assuming Miss Crowley. Unfortunately, assuming doesn't feed the bulldog. The top business schools prepare you for every eventuality you will ever encounter in the business world. Except one. Business travel. We've got that one covered. United. Come fly the friendly skies. Miss Crowley's three-person sales force stay on top of her far-flung enterprise. Jordan airlifts the Bulls against Barkley and the Sixers, followed by Pistons, Knicks, or Lakers, Suns. It all starts with the basketball show Sunday. Spurs owner Red McCombs in the center of your picture, watching and enjoying, although things could be better, I'm sure he'll say. 40 to 37, just under seven minutes to play, and Clyde Drexler has been a big reason why Portland is in charge right now with 18 points and three block shots, and David Robinson with eight points and two fouls. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner and Andrea Joyce. And Quinn, I guess I go back to what you mentioned in the first quarter about not really an awful lot of penetration by the San Antonio Spurs, although they have begun to run better here in the second quarter. Well, that's what I think they have to do because they can get the ball to David Robinson either by getting him, getting him on the block or Rod Strickland can penetrate and when the center comes to help out you got David who's quick to the, either get the shot off the glass or take the pass and that's where I think they can be the most effective uh, due to the San Antonio Spurs at least. David Robinson three out of four from the field eight points to just one rebound so far today. He gets rebounds in bunches. He's, he's, he plays real interestingly. When he gets going on a roll, it's hard to stop. But he's got fresh legs, so I suspect he'll come out and get a few extra ones now. A little backcourt pressure from Willie Anderson. Strickland and Anderson in the backcourt again. Mark Bryant to the baseline. Bryant didn't waste any time putting it up. Well, he didn't. You don't have a choice with David Robinson. You got to get it to the basket as quick as you can. Porter, Drexler. Danny Young, three guards into the lineup for the Blazers. Strickland. Three. Deflected. Loose ball comes to David Wingate for the open shot. Oh, oh off the glass. 
Did he call that? <laughs> Four for Wingate, 42-40, Portland's lead is two. Danny Young wants the ball down low on Jones. Or rather, Mark Bryant, rather, and his shot is off. Willie Anderson. And he's fouled in the shot. And Terry Porter says, not me. Second period in Phoenix, the Suns with a one-point lead on the Lakers. The winner there has a two games to one lead. Terry Porter's claim that was as Willie Anderson came to him, he tried to put his arms up, but in his effort to do that, there was no question in my mind that Terry Porter hit Willie Anderson on the arm. I thought Willie was taking a bad shot. I think he got bailed out by what happened with Terry Porter. Terry Cummings back into the lineup, Caldwell Jones to the bench. Well, you got more offensive punch in with, with Terry, but when you get that kind of play from a guy, 11th man on your bench, that's a real plus for the Spurs. One point ball game. Cliff Robinson down the lane. Bad shot. Cummings rebound. Spurs looking for the lead. Cummings around Robinson. Oh, what a shot by Terry Cummings. Rick Adelman says enough for now. He wants a 20 second timeout. Well, Terry Cummings, right? Now, this is a tough play. He goes under the basket to get away from Cliff Robinson to show you how Cummings has some versatility as well as Robinson. What's starting to happen for the Portland Trailblazers, they're taking bad shots. They had started making some jump shots earlier in the first quarter. Here in the second quarter, they haven't been able to do that. And, and because they haven't, they're in between, and I call it betwixt in between. They can't get the rebound, they can't get back on the other end for the fast break. That's how San Antonio's got themselves here with a three-point lead. Here in the second quarter, the Spurs have hit 9 of 15 from the floor, while Portland is 4 of 11. Drexler, tough shot. Willie Anderson kicks it out to Cummings, and that's an offensive foul on Anderson. Yeah, Terry Porter did a good job of, of establishing position, and, and that time Willie Anderson was clearly out of control. But you got to be careful, and a young club won't have this kind of problem. They get the crowd, get involved with the crowd, Greg, and then they play to what the crowd is chanting. And that time, that's what happened to Willie Anderson. That's how he got out of control. Portland has turned the ball over six times today. The Spurs four. Robinson with the defensive play, trying to save it as Cummings but it belongs to the Blazers. You'll see the quickness here of David Robinson. You see him get his hand on the ball. Now, here I see something that if you're Portland, you can't be happy about. I see everybody going down on the ball are San Antonio Spurs. And I'm Rick Adelman. I've got to wonder if my club into this game or not. I don't know at this point. Buck Williams, left hook, short. Drexler missed the offensive four. Here comes Strickland. Point lead, and there's a foul at midcourt. Wingate. I think you're right, Quinn. I don't think there's any doubt about whose adrenaline is flowing the strongest now. I think that, that Rick Adelman knows as well as Larry Brown. The team that plays with a sense of commitment is going to win this. Strickland on the steal. And Rick Adelman says, time out right now.
Are these the international He's rules? He's going for a word he knows. He's yeah. going for a two-syllable word. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, going to across. Europe. Um, <laughs> it's a continent. Does right. stick with one-syllable words? He's fine. <laughs> Hold your hand right there. Okay. Mumbly pig. <laughs> Mumbly pig with <laughs> dirt. <laughs> Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If they're not dockers, they're just pants. Uh, you guys have any food? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I think you should go back. Do you to think the wave office. needs words? <laughs> Me and Joe were two of the most feared players in football. But now we want to try more peaceful pursuits, like fishing. We brought along some cold Miller Lights. The Lights not some watered-down version of a regular beer. It's a less filling beer that really tastes great. You ready to try and catch some fish, Randy? Okay, Joe, I'll go first. Hey, Stitch, get in the boat! Oh, this fish is pretty easy. It's no fish story when it's Miller Light. Less filling tastes great. Hey, that was too small. Get out of here! With more interior room and cargo capacity than a compact Nissan, Toyota, Chevy S10, or Ford Ranger, the mid-sized Dodge Dakota Club Cab leaves the competition flat, Japanese or American. A sizable advantage, no matter how you stack them. Now get up to $2,000 cash back on selected trucks. We'll get you back to the game in a moment. I'm Pat O'Brien in our New York studios. Coming up on the Prudential at the half, we'll bring you up to date on today's playoff action around the NBA, including the Knicks win at Madison Square Garden earlier. And we'll also check in on the chief antagonists in the other Eastern Conference semifinal, Michael Jordan and Sir Charles Barkley. All that and, as usual, much, much more at a familiar place, the Prudential at the half. And right now, let's send you back out to courtside. All right, Pat, if I understand you correctly, you've thrown it back to us. It's a little bit noisy here in the Hemisphere Arena. 4-14 to play for the first half, and the Spurs have come back to grab a seven-point lead on the basis of that run over the last two minutes and 20 seconds. The Spurs have been very strong, and at the conclusion of our game, Quinn and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game in conjunction with the award. Miller Lite will present a check for $1,000 in that player's name to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Porter, Jerome Kersey, Buck Williams, Cliff Robinson, Clyde Drexler on the floor for Portland. Willie Anderson, Rod Strickland, Terry Cummings, David Robinson, and David Wingate for the Spurs. Shot clock is at six. Kersey looking for shooting room. Down to three. Got a shot away. Off the mark. Tapped up. No good. Buck Williams. That's what they did in great game one and two, Greg, is that they stayed on the offensive glass. I didn't think San Antonio did a very good job blocking out. That's how Buck got the tip. Williams has six. Five-point San Antonio lead. Cummings. Cummings gave Buck Williams a shove and knocked his goggles awry, and that's what Buck was complaining to the officials about on the way back up court. Well, see, you can't get into the, uh, the point where you're complaining to the officials. You just got to play and just be as aggressive as the opposition. Batted away, regained by Williams. Stolen by Cummings, ahead for Strickland. And the whistle blows. They call call a foul back before the play got going on the other end of the half court so the basket wasn't allowed. But Rod foul is on Terry Porter. It's his third. Yeah, Terry Porter, I mean, you don't want him to get his third foul. But this is a young man that we talked about earlier, Rod Strickland. Now, doing that 12-0 run, he ended up with six points, two rebounds, and two assists. He is a critical factor to what the Spurs do because... He gets the shooters the ball. He triggers things on the offense. And Danny Young is going to replace Terry Porter, who collected his third. We talked about Terry Cummings and Buck Williams. It's worth mentioning that down the stretch in game three here Thursday night, they had a little face-off and had to be separated. Yeah, they did, and it's one of those things where Terry just said, I wanted to make my presence felt. I was not going, I mean, he didn't want to get to a fight. Just, you know, get out there, bump some bodies a little bit, he said. Below three minutes, Drexler. Cummings with a rebound. Here's Cummings. 
And that's Buck Williams on the floor with David Robinson. Foul is on Williams. I see some, some frustration coming on right here. David Robinson clearly knocks Buck, maybe not that hard, but Buck comes back and tries to block David Robinson out. The official felt that he was too aggressive. Now, he also has the third foul. That really hurts with Duckworth out, and you got Brian got himself in a little bit of trouble. But Cliff Robinson, you got young players trying to play against David Robinson. That's a big problem. Technical accompanied it. Cummings missed it. Three personals. Buck Williams will leave the lineup. A frustrated man at this point. 2.45 to play here in the first half. And San Antonio has the lead 52 to 44. Five down for you to be a star. I put you on the front page of the Express News. You know, when I was thinking about Portland trying to get this thing together, I, with Wayne Cooper not playing, I was wondering what Rick Allman was going to do. I thought he'd put David Robinson, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Buck Williams on David Robinson to try to calm him down. But I think that's a wise choice not to, because it appears to me that I, I, I don't see this very often with Buck, that Buck is losing composure a little bit, and the team really feeds off of him. You see Kevin Duckworth in street clothes there to the right. Still sidelined by the broken bone in his right hand, his shooting hand. We'll remind you, coming up, the Prudential at the half. We'll send you back to New York. Pat O'Brien and Bill Raftery. That's coming up two minutes, 45 seconds from now. I was visiting a little bit with uh, Duckworth, and I asked him about his hand, and the doctor came over and told him. Now, Duckworth's anxious to play, you know, like most guys are. He thought he would be ready to at least get the cast off in two days. The doctor said, we'll have you back in about a week with a half cast on. So Duckworth <laughs> kind of dropped his head, but at least you know that his heart is still in it. He wants to get out and help his team. While we have a moment, let's take you over to Andrea Joyce. Andrea? Greg, we were just uh, hanging out behind the Portland bench, and you guys were mentioning the crowd and the noise here. Well, Portland is also very aware of it. In fact, Rick Adelman just told his players, keep your poise and try not to let the crowd take you out of the game early. Back to you guys. We saw Rick Adelman just throwing a chart down on the floor across the way, looking a little bit frustrated himself. Well, yeah, he looked frustrated at the, the technical, the whole thing. What, and I'm sure where he's going to try to make some, some expl explanation here is he doesn't feel they're getting a fair shake in terms of the calls. But I just think that the aggressive team, I don't care who it is, will get the benefit of the doubt. David Robertson's club, the San Antonio Spurs, have been the most aggressive team today. Robinson hits the first. And the second. He has 11 points. And it's a 10-point San Antonio lead with 2.40 to play for the half. Cliff Robinson. Blocked by David Robinson. Whistle on the play. And the foul is on Sean Elliott. But you saw harassing defense, though, Greg. All over. San Antonio is all right, out, Cousins, all yeah. over the court. That's third personal foul on Sean Elliott. And Frank Brakowski into the lineup now for the Spurs. Had fun this morning reading nice Frank Brakowski's uh, daily column <laughs> in the newspaper. Brick said, I'll be back tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> he came to let us know he got us a little publicity, though. 54-45, under two and a half to play. Cummings. Cummings has 17. Drexler, that one kicked by Rod Strickland. And welcome to those of you who've been watching the L.A. Lakers Phoenix Suns game. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner and Andrea Joyce here at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio where the Spurs have come back from a first quarter deficit to lead 56-45 with just about two minutes to play here in the first half. But Greg, Clyde Drexler has been the spark plug for Portland, but San Antonio has come back in a rush in the second period.
Robinson hits the deck as the whistle blows. David Robinson with 11 points. Clyde Drexler, 19 points and three blocked shots as the Spurs were able to get their running gear in the second quarter and get back into it and, in fact, grab the lead. There's David Robinson. You know, David is having a little seat right now, but what he did was he stopped the penetration of the Portland Trailblazers, and Clyde Drexler was one of them in early in the first quarter who had penetrated to the point he had 16 points. He only has 19 now, so you have to feel that David Robinson's presence in the middle caused that for Clyde not to happen as well. But the other thing with David Robinson was he got fast breaks going in the other end. He's a block the shot, got a hand on the ball, and San Antonio was able to capitalize going in the other direction. This is his opposite number at the line, Cliff Robinson, the rookie. And the problem Rick Adelman has with Portland is that his starting center, Kevin Duckworth, out with a broken right hand. Backup center, Wayne Cooper, sidelined today by Baxter. He does not have a true center on the bench. Strickland for Burkowski. Burkowski has come off the bench for six. 58-47 as we approach a minute and a half for the first half. Kersey. And there is a whistle on the play. Kersey will go to the line. That one on Terry Cummings. Larry Brown engineering quite a turnaround this season here in San Antonio. Spurs went from 21 and 61 last year to 56 and 26 in the Midwest Division Championship. Well, I think Larry did an outstanding job in putting the club together and coaching it. Getting David Robinson didn't hurt, but when you put people in here like Terry Cummings, I think that helped. But I'll tell you somebody they don't talk about, and Larry will. As Maurice Cheeks helped this team grow up some, too. The trade was made in a good trade for both clubs, but Cheeks was able to give some early stability, and now David Robinson has the confidence that he can play on this level. What a quick move by Terry Cummings around his man on the far side. And it's a 12-point lead for the Spurs. Cummings has 19. Strickland for Wingate. Oh! You'd have to say things are going well for San Antonio. 50 seconds to play. And listen to the crowd. Drexler trying to take Brakowski and is fouled. Go back and look at Terry Cummings, first of all, with that little move around his man. And Quinn, this is what the outside jumper will do for you. Well, you got to come guard him. Terry Cummings would rather go left, and there was poor defense on the part of Portland. They never got over the help out, but you see Terry is pleased with it. But this is a shot here. David Wingate got himself in trouble, was able to create one. And boy, when you San Antonio Spurs, you see that going. You say, folks, this is going well now. Create is being nice about it, isn't it? <laughs> Drexler's been stuck on 19 points for a while now. Now he has 20. Drexler almost had the steal. Now Rick Adelman's club has not been that aggressive, I, I don't think, here in the first half. They played. But clearly, San Antonio has been aggressive here. They've come up with loose ball, offensive rebound. Strickland found Caldwell Jones on the baseline that was batted out of bounds with exactly 30 seconds to play. And Larry Brown wants a 20-second timeout right here. Well, Larry's taking his 20-second, and it's a good one. Now, you have a chance here. There's a 16-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. But here's a chance to say, guys, we got a we can get a point, some points here, so let's make sure we get a good shot out of this thing. You see number 27, Caldwell Jones, right there. That man is in his 17th season out of Albany State, and his rookie year, Larry Brown was a first-year coach for the Carolina Cougars. Sean Elliott, his teammate, was in the first grade, and something called Watergate was just heating up. You've known Caldwell for a while. He uh, one of the wily veterans. He'll turn 40 years old in August. See, well, and they're trying to, he's going to retire this year, but I believe they're going to try to get him to come back. Phil, he's been one of the positive influence on David Robinson, keeping him calm when he goes against some of those other great centers in the league. So, you know, again, Larry Brown has done a good job, but when you get somebody like Caldwell, it makes a big difference. Moses Malone, the only other active player from ABA days. Pressure on Williams, and a backcourt violation goes over to Portland. 
Well, that's what Larry Brown did not want. What he's trying to say is that he didn't have the basketball, but I thought that was a good call because what could have happened is that was a foul with Reggie Williams. You watch, there's the ball gets knocked loose, and Reggie Williams starts pushing people away, but the official felt it was backcourt. Time remaining, lower right of your screen. No shot clock. This is Danny Young. To the baseline. And a whistle on the play. Yeah, Reggie Williams. Larry Brown can't believe it, but Reggie Williams pushed off trying to guard. Number 23, Byron Irvin is into the Portland lineup. A rookie out of Missouri. And a very good rookie that Rick Adelman has. And I think that's somewhat indicative of the depth that Adelman has at the guard spot. And and you have Brian Irvin sitting on the bench, bench as the fourth guard. Right now, he's wishing for a little depth at center. Young hits the first. That's his first point of the day. Seven seconds to play here in the first half. Sixty-two, fifty-one. Rakowski all the way down to Reggie Williams, who flips to Wingate, back behind his back, and time expires before he gets the shot off. Not a bad second quarter for the San Antonio Spurs. Not only do they get back into it, but they grab the lead. And the little dipsy doodle on the baseline is about, oh, a second and a half too long before things develop. Rod Strickland with a big quarter leads San Antonio to an 11-point halftime lead. Thanks, man. Stay cool. We tested STP oil treatment under the worst possible conditions. In the taxi cabs of New York City, the result? Engine lift away was reduced by up to 50%. And now there's an STP for your newer car, too. You know what's so special about this STP son of a gun protection? It's the eccentric molecular structural units, which form linear polymorphic bonding sites at the onset of induced atmospheric propulsion. In other words, it'll make your car look real good when you shoot it. Son of a gun. What a difference. choose to finance or lease your new GM vehicle someplace other than GMAC, you might find yourself waiting in line instead of out hugging one. GMAC. Nobody wants to get you into your new GM car or truck faster. Hollywood's Golden Boy is back, and so's Al Floss. Why would anyone hate me? Floss. Shut up, I'm thinking! The famous Teddy Z, then Golden Girl Estelle Getty, the new city manager. Get on the bus, Gianni, we've got a city to run. When an all-new city returns. All tonight on CBS. Monday, cosmetic surgery junkies. They just can't stop nipping and tucking. And life's a cabaret for designing women's Dixie Carter on Face to Face with Connie Chung Monday. CBS Sports presents The Prudential at the Half. Sponsored by the companies of The Prudential. Come to The Prudential and build your future on the rock. And our score at the half, the Trailblazers and the Spurs. The Spurs lead 62 to 51. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with my pal Bill Raftery. And welcome again to the Prudential at the half. We're in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. And the word today, folks, is defense, right? Well, Larry Brown's always been a staunch advocate of good, strong defense. They gambled a little and got Drexler going. Now they're back to the good half-court pressure. And believe it or not, Rod Strickland, the open floor, has been very creative. Yeah, it's fun basketball. Over the other half of the Western Conference semifinals, the Lakers 
are now up by 251 to 49 at halftime. The Lakers were re looking to regain home court advantage. They took the early lead against Phoenix behind James Worthy's 10 first quarter points, but Phoenix came back with some great play, and especially by Tom Chambers up the middle. And uh, right now the Suns lead 51 to 49. And Raft, what do you make of that one? Well, the Suns are playing good basketball. If they're out on the open floor, they're a different team. I think the Lakers are a better half court team. And of course, if they can get Worthy involved, he usually delivers. Well, uh, over uh, in the East, when earlier today uh, here on CBS, the uh, Knicks beat the Pistons 111 to 103 in Game Three of their semifinal series, and here's how the action of this game unfolded. New York dominated the first half of this ball game. They look like a different team. Gerald Wilkins takes the steal, goes in for a monster jam, and. Daly saying, wish I were home. The fans are saying, we're glad you're home. Patrick Ewing was the big man all day for the Knicks, scoring a career playoff high, 45 points. Detroit tried to double Ewing, but it didn't work. New York is back in this series. Well, we know we have one game on our belt. we got to come out tomorrow afternoon with the same intensity from the defensive standpoint. And we got to come out and, 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 and to take the Pistons out physically on the defensive end because uh, they're very, very good. That team down the hall is, is an excellent basketball team. But we played well today, and I think we're capable of winning tomorrow's game also. So we step back, uh, Raft, and look at the brackets there in the other Eastern Conference semifinal. Chicago has a two games to one lead over Philadelphia. They battle it out tomorrow. A uh, big game tomorrow. Chris Jordan and Barkley, a, a pretty good matchup. But you think of Ewing with 45 points, a strong effort. But Mo Cheeks cutting, doing some things to create the offense. And, of course, Kiki Vandeweghe now banging the deep shot. Makes them a different team. They, they look like a different team mm -hmm. today. There's one early baseball score to report. Frank Viola of the Mets became the first pitcher to win seven games in this young season. Viola scattered uh, four hits as he and his teammates dispatched the Dodgers 7-zip over at Shea. At the half returns uh, after a commercial and a word from your local station. Stay with us. Sheila! Do you know was Sheila? I was all wrong. We belong together. I know. So let's get married. Buy a big house. Sure, we're going to hit it big, kid. Stocks, bonds. We're on our way to Rainbow City. In the movies, happy endings are easy, but in the real world, they take solid planning. So for investment advice, peace of mind, even buying or selling a home, come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. New Heart's got only two shows left, and look who's talking. Dick! Baby Steph called me Dick. I wonder what she wants. New Heart, the last laughs, Monday. Danny DeVito has a problem. His mother, Billy Crystal, has a different problem. I'm going out of my mind! His ex-wife. Now he wants him to commit the perfect crime. I kill your wife, you kill my mama. That's fair. Join Billy Crystal and Danny DeVito for laughs in Throw Mama from the Train, Tuesday. This is CBS.
out at the Hemisphere, San Antonio leads the Trailblazers 62 to 51. And Pat O'Brien and Bill Raftery back in our New York studios. We're watching the uh, Lakers Phoenix game up here on the monitor. We figure, why should we be the only ones watching it, right? <laughs> Let's send you out to the uh, Memorial Coliseum. And here's Vern Lundquist with a taste of that game. Welcome those of you who've been watching the San Antonio Portland game. We're early in the third quarter here in Phoenix. Vern Lundquist, Lane Elmore, and Leslie Visser with Phoenix up by one, 56. 55, just under 10 minutes to go in quarter number three. Tom Chambers, back to Hornacek. 10 on the shot clock. Hornacek takes it, hands it. Well, that's one of the things that has been very successful for the Suns. They've been picking and choosing their spots to hit the perimeter shot. Hornacek spotting up nicely, but overall they've been getting high percentage shots with the penetration of Kevin Johnson. The Lakers, on the other hand, have had difficulty in getting their half-court offense going, but they started with some good ball movement in this half. Hornacek steps in and makes the steal. Here's Kevin Johnson, two on three, and he'll take the jumper anyway. Rims out. Worthy to Johnson, and the Lakers keep the pace fast. That's off the mark for three. One of the few back shots you'll see Magic take. Suns with three guys back. Magic pulled up near the three-point area with no rebound and took that shot. Kevin Johnson back to Hornacek. He drives the lane and throws it up. Tripped by A.C. Green. Bring you up to date, Lakers hitting 48%, Phoenix 62, inside scoring overwhelmingly in favor of Phoenix. Worthy with 14 points and Chambers with 14, that last foul was on Magic Johnson and not A.C. Green. And a lot of those 34 points that Phoenix has inside the paint have been layups or penetration and dish moves by Kevin Johnson. That shot short, no legs under it for Kevin Johnson. But Phoenix gets the ball back. First offensive rebound of the ball game for Phoenix. And an air ball from Johnson. Makes the steal, drives, and will shoot two. Who got the foul? Michael Thompson. A little bit of carelessness here by Michael Thompson after getting the rebound. Kevin Johnson was just hiding in the bushes, so to speak. Just to bring you up to date, the Lakers had an eight-point first-half lead at one uh, time in the first quarter. They led by three at the end of the first period of play. But uh, Phoenix came back and lead by two at halftime, 51-49, and Kevin Johnson misses the free throw. Kenny Glenn to the scores table. Kenny Glenn. All right, so uh, a little bonus coverage there for you. What do you make of that game, Raft? Well, you know, the Lakers obviously would like to run, and they have good transition after makes, Pat. But you forget, when they play half court, now A.C. Green and James Worthy are involved. So Phoenix is going to have the hands full, particularly Tom Chambers in either matchup. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date on that game uh, throughout the day. They're getting ready for the second half uh, out in San Antonio. That's at the half for Bill Raftery. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. The Prudential at the half has been sponsored by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Friday? You're kidding. We're getting company from Russia. How to get it done. Oil me some Russian flags. 1,500. We'll make it 2,500. And now we're going to have to put on this route. Oh, when you have these, why would you need the Black & Decker Power Ratchet? Because it's faster, easier, and works in lots of places. Manual wrenches can't. The Black & Decker Power Ratchet. It's really turning a lot of heads. performance radios. Everything you would expect from a Michelin, only faster. Describe McDonald's in three little words. Three little words. Big Mac, fries, Coke. Clean, clean, clean. <laughs> Butch, Gerald, <laughs> David. See, I met them all right here. Toy. Happy Meals. Fresh, deaf, cooking.
thinking. Extraordinary, innovative, convenient. Filet O Fish. You know the one at McDonald's. Food, folks, fun. Yum, yum, yum. Sports coverage of the 1990 NBA playoffs is sponsored by Jeep and Eagle, official vehicles of the NBA. UPS for guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast. UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by Armor All, because only Armor All works like Armor All. Part of the beautiful scenery here in San Antonio, Texas, that's not too far from the Hemisphere Arena where San Antonio leads Portland by a score of 62 to 51 as we prepare for the start of the second half. Welcome back to San Antonio, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, part of the crowd here. 15,910, the 22nd sellout this season. And as we said at the top of the show, the Spurs are 19 and two in front of sellout crowds here in San Antonio. Been a strange game, 33-25, Portland with the lead at the end of the first quarter, but then San Antonio outscored, outscored the Trailblazers 37 to 18 in the second period to grab that lead. Quinn, it's been a uh, it's been a seesaw battle at best. Well, it's been a seesaw battle. I just thought that San Antonio was a much more aggressive team, and they took Portland out of everything they tried to do. Portland never settled down. The crowd took Portland right out of the game. Take a look at some of the key statistics to this game, at least in the first half. You will see that uh, Rod Strickland keyed the second half surge, which saw San Antonio shoot 70% from the floor, while Portland shot just 28%, and that after a first period, which uh, was dominated by Portland Trailblazers. You can see that San Antonio is dominating the front line scoring as well. Terry Cummings has 19 points, and as far as leading scorer is concerned, Clyde Drexler leads the way for Portland with 20. Cummings has 19, but Quinn, Clyde had 16 of those 20 in the first period. Well, that's part of what I'm talking about. His team starts standing around. There's a problem when a guy like Clyde Drexler gets going well. Everybody stands around and starts watching him, and they stop doing the things they need to do to help the club win. As I talked to Rick Adelman at halftime, he said just that. We start standing around. Around. That's why Clyde only got three points. Those coaches hate that standing around, don't they? Well, it's, it's really bad for the game, to tell you the truth, Greg, because now the defense can focus in on that one individual, and I don't have to look twice if I'm not guarding Clyde Rexler. I don't have to look twice about my man because he's just standing there. He's easy to find. Second half underway. San Antonio with the ball going right to left on your screen. And Willie Anderson looks inside to Cliff Robinson and outside now to Cunningham. When Terry Cummings is popping that outside jumper, he is double trouble. Same starting five for both clubs. Porter for three. Well, one of the things Portland is, is really missing is that Jerome Kersey really hadn't played well for him. You remember, he had that big game in game one, but here in games two and, and games three and four, he really hadn't played big, and that's one of the things that is hurting Portland. Jerome Kersey with just five points today comes in averaging 20 for the series, for the playoffs. David Robinson's short hook will follow. Spurs lead at 66-54. Kersey calling for the ball and gets it. We'll go one-on-one -on -one now with Cummings across the middle. David Robinson with the ball. Strickland, nice pass down low to Anderson who kicks it back out. Shot clock at seven as Robinson looks for room on the baseline. Tip no good, whistle blows, and the foul is on Cummings. That's number three on TC. 
Well, the one thing that Portland can't afford to do, he, even here early on in the third quarter, you can't trade baskets. You need to come out and set a tone if you're the Portland Trailblazers. The guy that normally does that for him is the man with the ball, Terry Porter, either dishing it or taking it to the basket. Robinson, three-second violation. Buck Williams setting up camp. That was caused by David Robinson. Cliff Robinson couldn't get around David, and then all of a sudden he was looking for help, and Buck Williams was standing in the lane too long. There yeah, you saw David's parents here earlier. David's brother Chuck is here as well, who plays, just finished his freshman year at the Naval Academy. And Larry Brown was out here at practice teaching him a few things yesterday as the Spurs turn it over. Quarter down the lane. Another rebound for Cummings. Anderson for Strickland. Oh, good pass to David Robinson. Fourteen point lead, nine and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. And Kersey and Sean Elliott, and the foul is on Kersey. He's frustrated, Greg. I mean, he, Jerome Kersey has not gotten in position. Rick Adelman knows how important he is to the team, and it's starting to get to Kersey. He can't get position, and it's, it's just become frustrated. You've got to keep working hard, because the teams are not going to get let you get your, your spot you normally get. You heard Andrea talk about psychology 101 a short while ago. Sean Elliott was doing a little talking on his way back up court. Shot clock at seven. Strickland around Porter. That's Ron Strickland at his best. Porter for three. So Terry Porter gets three back in a hurry. He has 13 points. 70, 57, Spurs. But if you notice where the points are coming from, Portland is shooting jump shots, and you'll see San Antonio get nice to 15 footers. Elliott's baseline shot doesn't drop, and here comes Portland. Drexler back outside. Another three by Porter. That is a kick ball and belongs to the Spurs. Take a look at ball movement by the Spurs that other trip down court. Well, what, what do you have is, first of all, the long outlet gets it by most of the defense, and then from there, there's some options because Rod Strickland comes, and he knows if he gives it to Mr. Robinson, he knows what to do with it. There's Chuck Robinson, who will be a sophomore at the Naval Academy next year. Yeah, I asked him if he's going to grow six inches like his brother. He said, boy, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson's drive, no. Tap, no good. Loose ball in the air. And a loose ball foul is on Sean Elliott. And Terry Porter paying a visit to the folks across the way. Well, it, there's just a good effort on the part of both players. There was no intentional foul as Sean Elliott going over to give a hand, if you will, to uh, Terry Porter. But there was really no foul intended to shoot. Four fouls on Sean Elliott. He is out of the game now and replaced by David Wingate. If Terry Porter comes in this direction like that, it's all yours. Now, I'm going to let you catch it. <laughs> On the drive, Cliff Robinson tied up by David Robinson. I mean, David Robinson was just beat on that play, Greg, and was able to get back fast enough. Now, right here, watch, Cliff Robinson beats him, but David is so quick. I mean, he was really quick. Really <laughs> quick. That's about as quick as I've seen him. <laughs> so quick, we're going to have to digest that with 7.57 to play in the third and San Antonio up 13. Even the most remote area. Back in San Antonio, the Spurs lead the Trailblazers 70 to 57 in the third period. As we mentioned earlier, Wayne Cooper is out of today's game because of recurring back spasms. He is connected to a micro stimulation unit, and this is an electronic device that controls the back spasms with electrical stimulation. It's sort of supposed to help the healing process. I talked to him just a couple of minutes ago, and he says he really feels best when he's flat on his back, and he plans to get.
get as much rest as he possibly can in the next couple of days, and he says he's optimistic he'll be able to play on Tuesday. Back over to you guys. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. <laughs> the tap goes to San Antonio. Well, that story began to develop after Wayne Cooper left Thursday's game with back spasms. Robinson's turnaround no good. Buck Williams rebounds. We told Andrea, that story is all hers. She can get all the medical lingo down. Nice pass to Clyde Drexler coming down the lane. But that's one of the few opportunities that Portland has had to push the ball up to take advantage of the lack of defensive transition by San Antonio. Drexler with 22. Portland looking for a defensive stand here. Shot clock down to three. Anderson open, comes up short, gets it right back. Down the lane, tried to give it to Robinson, and Porter made the steal. Four on three. Porter to Buck Williams. One of the foul call, didn't get it. Cliff Robinson, loose ball, no foul. Here comes Wingate. Strickland with the rebound, and is fouled. And there is Brick cheering his teammates on from the bench. That's four on Buck Williams. And when we're talking about the turnovers, you see Portland has 11, San Antonio six. Now of those 11 turnovers, you see San Antonio's converted 14 points up to Portland six. That is a, a big key into with these two teams, primarily because these are two fast-breaking teams. And those turnovers that have been committed, the majority are steals, which means the ball is in play and you have an opportunity to get back before the defense can stop you scoring. Strickland gets the bounce. He has 13, 72, 59, 640 to play, third quarter. Drexler, down low to Buck Williams. Buck Williams has eight. And Buck, tough getting off the blocks here, is averaging close to 16 in the playoffs. Terry Cumming calls for the basketball and gets it. Drives on Williams and got tied up. Cliff Robinson tied him up. Into the game now comes Mark Bryant. Mark for Buck Williams. Buck Williams. Well, Mark Bryant is coming in the game, but he's he's got somewhat of a ginger uh, ankle. We talked about how he got it wrapped. I watched him come out at halftime, and he's walking gingerly, so we'll have to wait to see how much that's going to affect his play. Tap picked off by Wingate to coming. Basket, yes! Here, that's just quickness that gets to the ball and then just presence of mind to see that he's got Mark Bryan in position to go try for the block and Terry Cummings with great strength gets it in and you think they aren't happy here? Third personal foul on Cliff Robinson. Cummings looking to make it a three-point play. Doesn't do it, Mark Bryant and Bryant limping up court noticeably. Pass in the middle, picked off by Wingate. Three on two, Strickland. Back to Wingate. Oh, look at the pass. And blocked by Cliff Robinson. Willie Anderson had it rejected. And we can barely hear the whistles. Well, you'll see coming up on the left side of the green. Good ball moving, but you see right here, this, these are two blocks, if you want to call it that because both Jerome Kersey and Cliff Robinson were there. Got all ball. Drexler. And Mark Bryant across the lane. That's what's been sorely missing by Portland. They have no inside game, and that they end up shooting jump shots. They haven't been taken to the basket, and nobody to throw it to inside. At the start of the half, we showed you the great disparity in front line scoring. Willie Anderson. Five fifteen to play, thirteen point lead for San Antonio. Drexler for Cliff Robinson, and he'll go to the line to shoot the free throw too. 
Dick Bavetta says that is the third personal foul on Willie Anderson. Well, with, with uh, David Robinson out of the game, he's got a lot of things you can do. That time, Clyde Drexler is a threat inside. So him being a threat to do two people, foul Cliff Robinson open on the other side, for, and Robinson finishes off the three-point play. Speaking of David Robinson, he'll come in at the next whistle. It's down to a 10-point lead, five minutes to play for the third quarter. Wingate. Andrea Joyce tells us that although Mark Bryant's ankle is sore, he will continue to play on it. Anderson regains possession. Strickland. The lead is back to 14. Robinson trying to get inside. Loose ball. San Antonio Wingate. And Terry Cummings and Clyde Drexler back up court are having serious words. Terry Porter still wants a little bit more conversation. We'll let cooler heads prevail with 4.21 to play here in the third period. And San Antonio leads it 82-66. He's just livid because that was a technical call against Clyde Drexler. So Rick Allerman is saying that you should have called something against Terry Cummins. He is just livid. Since the end of the first quarter, not much has gone right for Rick Adelman. It came off of this shot by Cliff Robinson, a resulting San Antonio fast break. Well, you see, there's nobody that's back. You see one, two, three players with white jerseys, and hustling back is Jerome Percy. But that's not much you can do if you don't have somebody to stop the ball getting back for the defensive transition. Double technicals called on Clyde Drexler and Terry Cummings, and this is why, Quinn. Well, they got pretty physical in here. Right here is Terry Cummings, and if you watch, you'll see real quickly that they go in there, and it's just a little contact made. Right there, and then all of a sudden, Clyde Drexler goes down to the ground. And then after that, they, everybody's just chasing for the ball. But well, once the fast break starts, you got a little more coming along. Right in there, you see, he got tripped. And Terry Cummins took exception to that. There was a double technical foul because Terry Cummins and Clyde Drexler, that's not basketball there, fellas. We've got to change this up. In the case of coincidental technicals, no foul shots are taken. 4-10 to play, third quarter, 82-66. Kersey inside is fouled. Foul is on Frank Brickowski. That's number two on Brick, which means he's got a lot more to give before this day is over. He, he doesn't take home any fouls with him either. I can tell you that. He's in one of those crews that Brick is going to try to hurt your arm a little bit. One for two on that trip. 82-67. Wingate. And Bryant with the rebound on the bad ankle. And is the last one up court. Good steal by Anderson. And a poor decision by Kersey. David Robinson, baseline. Sent Cliff Robinson flying and then hit the open shot. Well, Cliff Robinson's got to stay up. I mean, if you get bumped, that's just all a part of this game in the playoffs. You stay on your feet. Kersey, open. Kersey has just six points today.
the Spurs not just going to throw anything up. Anderson to Grakowski. Blocked by Cliff Robinson. Drexler on the move. Flips it home. No way. Offensive foul on Drexler. But no way he's getting away with that one. You'll watch it, but there's no question. Right here in good position, hands up. Willie Anderson has it. The official Dick Pavetta right on the call. Two minutes, 40 seconds to play. Third quarter. Willie Anderson. And a foul on the play. Foul on Kersey is second. Third team foul. Jerome Kersey commits his second into the game. Caldwell Jones for David Robinson. Hey, yeah, Jones, Caldwell Jones, coming in a good game for David. One of the things that has been of question about David Robinson is his stamina. I mean, he, he gets tired pretty quickly. And obviously, he's pulling a mistake. Lay Brown wisely seeing David tired takes him out of the game. Rakowski calling for the ball and gets it. He's got a mismatch trying to guard Cliff Robinson again in the middle of the Portland defense. again in the middle of the Portland defense. And loses control at the other end. Drazen Petrovic into the game for the Blazers. Portland has turned the ball over 16 times now to seven for San Antonio. Strickland tapped up by Burkowski. It didn't fall. Petrovic, three-pointer, doesn't go. Kersey checks down the rebound and comes back. Rejected by Jones. Willie Anderson out of bounds to Portland. You know what? People... Caldwell Jones has been in the league so long, people forget. Some of these young kids, they don't remember. Caldwell Jones was a stopper for the Philadelphia 76ers, and blocking shots was his forte. You take it in there, he's not David Robinson, but he's better in position than he can block shots. Rakowski and Rod Strickland to the bench. Johnny Moore, number 00, into the game. And Robinson is back, too. If Portland wants to get back in this game, Greg, they've got to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball and getting better shots. Shot clock is at seven. Kersey. Now, they're lucky there. That's a jump shot that David Rotten, well, they see, and they lose it out of bounds. They take a jump shot, got no chance to get a rebound. So you've got to get it inside. David Wingate, Caldwell Jones with the rebound, and his foul. That's three on Jerome Kersey. First in the last two minutes. And there's a timeout on the floor. One minute, six seconds to play. Third quarter. San Antonio in the lead, 84 to 67. I want to remind you that there's another full day of action slated for tomorrow afternoon. It all begins with OB and Raft at the studios in New York with the basketball show at 12.30 Eastern time. Then at 1 o'clock Eastern, the Bulls and the Philadelphia 76ers. The Bulls lead that series two games to one. And following that one, you will see either the Pistons against the New York Knicks or the L.A. Lakers against the Phoenix Suns. Quinn, you and I watched the Bulls and the 76ers in action last night. It looked for a while like Chicago might catch Philly. <laughs> you got Michael Jordan on your team, you've got a chance. They were down 20 at one point. I thought they were out of the game with about 10 minutes to go and, and with about 50 seconds to go in the game. If Michael makes that jump shot, they're clearly back into it. But, you know, Philadelphia hung on to that and was able to come out with the win. Speaking of uh, trying to make a jump shot, Portland Trailblazers would love to do that. Well, they need this dearly just to get the ball inside, Greg. I mean, I've talked about it. Buck Williams hasn't been able to get his game going. But I'll tell you what, you've got to give San Antonio credit. Part of the reason that they haven't been able to get inside is David Robinson protects the middle. He's been patrolling it, and that's what you need to do, protect that paint. We saw 
Frank Brokowski patrolling the outside of the San Antonio huddle. We have here uh, in the San Antonio Light newspaper is where Brokowski <laughs> writes his column. And this morning he writes, all the makings of a wonderful day. CBS, Saturday afternoon, a packed house, Quinn Buckner, Greg Gumbel, Larry Brown's tie, and two well-coached teams. <laughs> <laughs> and Brick wanted to make sure we gave him a little publicity about that. I mean, reading this article, I think he gives a pretty good account of what has to happen. He said in game three that they needed to have a gut check. That is the San Antonio Spurs. And they had a gut check, and I'll tell you what, it's made a difference and how they played today. They know they can win. They're home. They're comfortable. One little idea of his unique perspective. He says the future of this league is in private jets. <laughs> <laughs> Rick's a little different. Robinson's pass is tipped and taken away. Drexler to Porter. Followed by Buck is no good, and the follow-up there is good. 84-69. And 45 seconds for the quarter. Johnny Moore down the lane. Nice shot. Oh, it really was over the defense. Terry Porter for three. Front rim. Caldwell Jones is there. That shot Terry Porter was quick, but one of the reasons he took it was 32 seconds on the shot clock. And if you can take it, you get a chance to get two shots for one. That's why he took a quick three-pointer. Shot clock now at eight for San Antonio. Willie Anderson. Down low, Caldwell Jones, a travel. So the Blazers have just a notch over 10 seconds to get something done here before the third quarter expires. Terry Porter with an eye. Three seconds. Two seconds. One. Did he get it off in time? It counts. Larry Brown says no. Dick Bavetta says yes. And Bavetta's opinion is the one that counts. Well, Greg, there's no question in my mind. If you watch the clock, he gets the shot off. But Larry Brown is trying to say no. But this looks pretty good to me. Oh my. I take that back. That looked as good as I thought it did. <laughs> Larry Brown was absolutely right. I, I really thought he got it off. By the time I heard the horn, it looked that way. Nick Bavetta says yes. 86 71 Spurs and the three. We'll be back. Today's small cars are tougher than ever. nuevamente a la arena de la hemisferia San Antonio, Texas, donde el marcador está Spurs 86, Trail Blazers 71. Yo soy Armando Quintero, la voz de los playoffs NBA en la cadena hispana de los San Antonio Spurs y ahora vamos a regresar con mis colegas, mis amigos de CBS Sports, Greg Gumbel y Quinn Buckner. Gentlemen, it's all yours and how about them Spurs? <laughs> <laughs> Armando, thank you very much. Armando Quintero of KSAH Radio doing the honors for us here at the start of the fourth quarter. Well, he's something of a good luck charm himself for the Spurs. They're 45 and 12 when he does their games. Buck Williams, no. Wingate with a rebound. Armando, incidentally, about to start his 11th season as the radio voice of the Dallas Cowboys. And Danny Young commits the foul. Eight minutes to go, and the Lakers are down 14. Oh, Phoenix is going at them. They, they, Phoenix has played pretty well. I've watched them since I've been out on the West Coast. And look, they stay really aggressive, and that's what you have to do. Speaking of aggressive, Buck just pulled number five. Well, Terry Cummings gets the ball, but you see the pick right there. Johnny Moore does the right thing. He's got position, and Buck was trying to get around. He just a little too aggressive. Just picked up his fifth foul. Terry Cummings. And you can see them go right at Buck Williams immediately, who is within one foul of being out of here. Johnny Moore. Terry Cummings right at him again and right by him. You're right there, Greg. You couldn't afford to get a foul. And Terry Cummings wisely takes it to the basket. You got a man with five fouls. You try to get him out of the game.
This is Drexler with 10 seconds on the shot clock, three-pointer, way off the mark. Moore, oh, look at the feed for Sean Elliott. Rick Edelman says we'll take 20 seconds to talk about it here. Well, you get in here, there's a battle right there. These two guys have been banging at it quite a bit. But David Robinson still able to hold his own, come up with it. And the quick outlet pass is what started that whole thing. And you see finish off. The pass was what was great because the defender went out to get Sean Elliott out in the corner. And Sean at the last minute cut to the basket. Johnny Moore was able to put the money, put the ball on the money. 25 points for Terry Cummings leads the way. to 71. Danny Young. And Robinson with another rebound. Cummings with Kersey on him now. Down low, Robinson. All day long. He got it on the move, Greg. That's an all day long jump shot. The lead is 22 to the baseline. Young had it blocked, and Robinson lost the handle. I think David Robinson had visions of an earth-shaking slam. <laughs> oh, he was going to try to give him a big one. Petrovic spinning in the lane, pulls up and hits. 15 amateur officials alongside us here <laughs> calling traveling on that play. 15 of 15,000. <laughs> Here's Johnny Moore trying to work his way inside, throws it up. It was off balance and that'll go on. Terry Cummings tied up Mark Bryant. And there is a timeout on the floor with 9.28 to play. The Spurs very much in charge. We asked the International Motorsports Association to challenge the top four compact 4x4s in a test of climbing power in the... 1-11-103 was the final score as the Knicks jumped back into their playoff series with the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference. Michael Jordan, although the Bulls lost last night, continues to pump them home. He's hitting at 40 a game so far in the playoffs. And Phoenix, a victory in L.A. in game one of that series, winning again today. 96-86 with less than seven minutes to play. Here, we're just under nine and a half to play for the game, and San Antonio is in charge 92-73. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner, Andrea Joyce at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio. The jump ball between Terry Cummings and Mark Bryant. Save and then out of bounds. And belongs to Portland. And it appears that a photographer over there just had his camera stepped on. <laughs> yeah, he got a little present. He, he, thought, so close. he thought that was a good seat when he first <laughs> arrived. See, it's at this stage of the game, I think that Portland just has to all take their time. They've been rushing, and in and, and doing so, they've been making some bad decisions. This time, they get an offensive foul. Uh, That's Mark Bryant. That's three on Mark Bryant. Petrovic back into the game. On the baseline, David Robinson. And Buck Williams goes up for the board. Robinson with the steal. Here comes Strickland and Cummings. Terry will take it. Twenty-seven for Terry Cummings. Drexler rejected by Robinson. 
That's four block shots for Robinson. Kersey. One of the few times the ball has been taken right at David Robinson. As long as you let it go before you get to his body, he's quick enough to, to block the shot. If you go at his body, he can't get off the ground. Robinson going against Buck Williams, who has five. Petrovich helped out with the double team, and he gave it up. Cummings again. Save. 27 for Terry Cummings. And the foul is on Willie Anderson. Oh, I see Willie Anderson making some friends out there. <laughs> Dick Rivetta. You know, there's one thing that struck me. Every playoff game we've done, you know every official. You gotta know him, Everyone. Greg. You gotta know how to talk to him when they call those fouls on you. Buck Williams to the baseline. And he's fouled. Talk about what Terry Cummings has done for the San Antonio team, Quinn. What about what Buck Williams has done for Portland? Well, I think emotionally he has been the guy that, that banded the team. You know, he's, he's a very strong person of character, and I'm not to imply that Portland didn't have it. But this man played, and I said this to you in the first game, he played after having his eye socket uh, hit pretty hard. So I, if he can play, everybody can play. But by the same token, he struggled today, and by virtue of that, Portland has struggled too because he just hasn't been able to get in the game. We've talked about this before, but it's ironic that Portland went through the league season, the regular season, one of the healthiest, if not the healthiest team in the league. Their entire front line went all 82 games. And yet they get to this stage of the playoffs and suddenly they're hurting in the middle. Well, sometimes you don't get a, a break. And, I, and I'm, by a break, I mean a rest. If you get a spring ankle, you get a couple, 10 days off. That makes a big difference when you're playing 82 games. You get a chance to breathe easy. Petrovich fouls David Robinson from behind. That's three on Drazen Petrovich. And Frank Burkowski into the lineup replacing David Robinson. And see Terry Cummings has been doing a job just about equal to the one Portland has been doing up front. Rejected there and losing the handle and Portland scrambling for the loose ball. It just doesn't go their way. That just, that's indicative of how the game has gone for Portland all day. Anderson, three-pointer is good. <laughs> Willie has 12. Petrovic. Tapped up, no good. Tapped out of bounds belongs to Portland. And with a timeout on the floor, 6.52 to play, 99-76, San Antonio. Working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. Willie Anderson, Terry Cummings, and David Robinson of the San Antonio Spurs form one of the NBA's most talented trios. Anderson's 10-point passes free the agile Robinson underneath. While Cummings shows speed and power in shutting down opponents, blending their diverse abilities, teammates Willie Anderson, David Robinson, and Terry Cummings work to be the best they can be. Dear Dad, I know you didn't want me to put off college for the Army, but Dad, I'm learning things here that are really going to help me succeed, no matter what I do. Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund and earn $17,000 for college for only a two-year enlistment or $25,200 for a four-year enlistment. Dad, now I'll get the most out of college and the best for myself. Be all that you can be. Broken peace treaty. It has to stop sometime. Sends the renegade chief on the warpath and Ethan into hostile territory. You must die. Paradise, tonight. See it. On your way back to San Antonio, Pat O'Brien and Playoff Central. Let's recap the day's action around the NBA. Earlier, the New York Knicks climbed back into their series with the Pistons by winning Game 3 at home. Now, in the other Western Conference semifinal in progress out in Phoenix, four and a half minutes left in the game, the Suns lead 102-88. to 88. Did you know I was going to say Tom Chambers and Phoenix? 
Outscored LA by 12 in the third quarter. Tom Chambers here with a big three-point play. Following a scramble for the ball, the Suns were able all afternoon to penetrate Los Angeles' defense and get the inside baskets. There's the Hornacek drives. He's got 19 on the day. And the Suns lead 102 to 88. A reminder that tomorrow we'll do it all over again, starting with the basketball show at 12.30 Eastern Time, followed by our doubleheader, the Bulls and 76ers in Game 1. Then some of you will see the Knicks and the Pistons, while some of you will see Lakers and Phoenix. And right now, as we go back uh, to Greg and Quinn, Greg, Joe Fraser has not answered the bell again in the 14th round, and Ali wins again, and it was a thriller in Manila. Back to you guys. <laughs> and again, Quinn Buckner lost money on it. It's amazing. <laughs> Darn, I thought I had that thing right this time. <laughs> well, not here they can't anyway. At least Portland hasn't proven they can beat San Antonio here in the playoffs. As they come back onto the floor, we'll remind you tonight on CBS, Paradise coming up. Followed by the famous Teddy Z, City, and Saturday Night with Connie Chung. That's tonight here on CBS. 6.52 to play, fourth quarter. 99-76 San Antonio. Buck Williams and Frank Krakowski going at it down low. Kersey's shot is long. Buck Williams there for the rebound and the follow-up. And things are getting a little rough down low. Well, they, they're becoming a little bit testy. And part of that great is that Portland wants to try to establish a tempo for what can happen in the next game. This, when Portland and San Antonio played the second game in Portland, that's what got San Antonio back into the rhythm to play here. Whoa, what a shot by Willie Anderson. Back comes Drexler in a hurry. Blows right by his man and to the hoop. I mean, doesn't even crack a smile. Just think that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> 24 for Clyde the Glide as the Spurs top the 100 mark. And six minutes to play for the game. Rakowski over Buck Williams. Rebounded by Kersey. And Rakowski and Williams just throwing forearms at each other. That one inside, and Kersey is fouled by Willie Anderson. So one of the reasons David Robinson's not in the game, and all of a sudden you notice the last two times down the court, yeah, and Larry Brown has just gotten him up to get him in the game. Portland is taking the ball to the basket because there's nobody in there to stop them. Order. Willie Anderson with five personal fouls, and now David Robinson replaces Frank Krakowski. Reggie Williams also checks into the game for Willie Anderson. And you lose some of the activeness that Willie Anderson brings. He made an acrobatic shot there for Reggie Williams in terms of stroking the basketball. You don't lose much there because he can flat out stroke it with anybody. Jerome Kersey just three out of 14 from the field this afternoon. That one out of bounds, San Antonio ball. Kersey has 10 points. You recall game one of this series, he hit 25 points and had 16 rebounds. Terry Cummings. Around Kersey. Doesn't fall for him. David Robinson. Foul. Four on Kersey. You can count the things that have gone right for Jerome Kersey today on one hand. No, he, he hadn't been into the game at all right here. Go, taking the penetration is Terry Cummings. Robinson. Defense never gets there to, to help out. David Robinson is just so strong. And then up here, there was no question about the foul. But I look at Jerome Kersey, and he looked like that wasn't a foul. I wanted to say, <laughs> you jumped all over his back. <laughs> There's Jerome. 21 points. Eight rebounds, four blocked shots for David Robinson today. And countless alters in terms of shots. Kersey looks for the pick from Buck Williams and gets it. 103-84, five minutes to play. The double team on David Robinson. Strickland fights his way inside. 
Terry Crummins is just all over. That's 31 for Cummings. Drexler. And he'll go to the free throw line. Foul is on David Robinson. That's four on Robinson. Lieutenant J.G. David <laughs> Robinson. But David didn't do a very good job stepping to the baseline that time. And uh, Clyde Drexler took advantage to the other side and protected it with the rim. Clyde Drexler, I imagine, looks like a cross between a Ferrari and a Mack truck coming around the corner sometimes. Reggie Williams to Cummings. for Cummings as the Spurs just play a little drive and dish. Jerome Kersey as Cummings went for the steal and didn't get it. 107, 89, four minutes to play. 303 to play in Phoenix as the Suns look to go up two games to one. Portland has got to use this game as a catapult to, the, to game five. They've got to come out defensively and set some kind of tempo because they have not stopped San Antonio from getting the ball where they want to once. Quinn, it's interesting that most of the Spurs say that they use the fourth quarter as Kersey's fouled and will go to the line. Most of the Spurs say they use the fourth quarter of their loss in Portland in game two as the springboard for coming back here. Well, that's what I, I'm, I'm saying that, that Portland needs to do. They, they've gotten themselves in a position here where they, it's pretty tough to get back in the game. They're down there 19. But they don't seem to be establishing anything, and that's what I'm having. Cummings has a seat with 33 points and 11 rebounds. But I tell you what this also says is it says how badly they miss uh, Wayne Cooper because he typically comes in and he blocks shots and that stops some of the San Antonio Spurs from going in there without concern about if there's going to be a shot block. The absence of Duckworth and Cooper has left the Blazers effectively without a body to put on David Robinson. Yes. Robinson missed that follow, and here comes Portland. Drexler on the run feeds Petrovic. Uh, 107-93 as uh, we have 310 to play now. San Antonio is not in a position where they can really stall. You got the 24 second clock, but you gotta stay aggressive. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta take that shot. But Portland, on the other hand, has got to start picking up a little bit more full court because those are two wide open shots. Kersey. And the whistle outside, the foul is gone Frank Prakowski. And we have a clock stop with 2.51 to play. We'll be back. Sending flowers means sending information long distance. However, during busy periods like Mother's Day, connections aren't always made in time. So last year, FTD switched to U.S. Sprint and successfully processed over two million orders. Of course, some results simply can't be measured. 100% digital fiber optic data only from U.S. Sprint. I was hoping you'd say that. Cold filtered. Never eat pasteurized. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. This is $5,000 for the baby. I'm embarrassed to be taking this. I mean, you could do something with it. Like what? What's something you and Mom would enjoy? Go on a cruise or... If your mother and I want to do that, we'll do that. I can't pay this back. Pay it back by doing the same thing for your grandchild. Air Jordan airlifts the Bulls against Barkley and the Sixers, followed by Pistons, Knicks, or Lakers, Suns. It all starts with the basketball show Sunday. 
they are happy here in San Antonio at the Hemisphere Arena. Welcome back, everyone. That's why they're happy. San Antonio in charge with 251 to play. Quinn way up top at the beginning of the show. We talked about how the points off turnovers have effectively told us who was going to win the game. And look what's happened today. Well, it, it proved to the truth to form. And you see this 12 to 22. That, that's the difference. I mean, there are 19 turnovers by Portland and 10 by San Antonio. But the points off the turnover are definitely the key. And, and, that's, and that's what we talked about. And the reason I, I feel it's important is the majority of the turnovers, if you recall, they haven't been turnovers where the ball has gone out of bounds, where it's a travel. They're active. They're active turnovers which translate into steals. And that way you turn them up, you take it to the other end, and you convert them. Steal by Drexler. He steps on the line. We'll remind you, the coordinating producer of the NBA on CBS is Michael Burks. Today's game produced very well indeed by Dan Forer and directed very well indeed by Mike Arnold. <laughs> here, here. At the half was produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Kathy Barreto. The senior producer of CBS Sports is David Winter and the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. Frank Burkowski. Baseline pop doesn't go and here comes Drexler. Porter, Petrovic. 109-96. They still got to do, they got to have about three stops and score, Greg. Strickland, penetrating. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I told you, Ross Strickland has to play well. He's got 17 points, five rebounds, but he's got 14 assists already. So he's proven his value to this club. Two minutes, two minutes. Under two minutes to play now. Buck Williams trying to find a way past David Robinson. The left hook doesn't fall. Loose ball, Kersey fouled, and he'll go to the line. Looks like Frank Brickowski with the foul. Frank Brickowski gets his hand as he goes to the line. 65 seconds to play in Phoenix, and the Sun's up 12. Well, Frank Brickowski is on his way out, and they get Terry Cummings back in the game. Just for a little offensive punch, as though they need it. Wingate almost lost it, tries the feed, and saved by the Trailblazers, and then lost out of bounds. Well, Rick Adelman has got to be concerned. He, he looks for his horses to score, and, and when I say horses, I mean his, his players that you can just ride. One of them that really has shown up just in the second half when it's been decided is Jerome Kersey. He's got to have a big game for him to be successful because he gets out on the brakes and makes so many things happen. Petrovic has the loose ball, and here come the Blazers again. Baseline, Kersey, and he'll go to the line again. You know, you mentioned Rod Strickland. He had 17 assists the other night. He is averaging over 13 assists a game in this series. He had 14 the game before that, so he's really come on with getting his assists. I think that first game, he had to get the feel for, you know, what it was like to play with this club in, in the playoffs. But since then, he's been the guy that's just ignited this team. And as I said at the beginning of the telecast, he needed to get going. And in the second quarter, as things started to go well for the Spurs, he was a big part of it. Game five of the series Tuesday at Portland. Game six back here in San Antonio Thursday. And then a game seven if necessary one week from today in Portland. Strickland into the turnover. And Porter tried to drop it back to Drexler and it's out of bounds and it belongs to the Trailblazers. We have 107 to play in the game. I'm seeing, looking at Rod Strickland. He's, he's telling the official that he blew the call. Rod, you got to be <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> you played a great game and you worried about that call. Porter got the shot away and hit it. 111 102. This is a nine point game as we approach the one minute mark. Coming side up and lost it and fouled. 
ball is on Drexler. That's well, three on Clyde. He's been active. Terry Cummins turns his back, and as soon as he turned his back, you can see that Ooh. Clyde Drexler came for the steal. I agree with you, ooh, because ooh. it happened to be right in front of us, but the official had a better position. Last night at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Bulls had a late rally that came up just short. Doesn't appear that the Blazers are going to get that close today. No, and primarily because of this player, a good fellow here. He, he's done a great job, Terry Cummings. Every time they've needed a big play, he seems to come up with it, even on offensive end or still on the defensive end. 55.2 seconds remaining to be played in this game. It's the Spurs 113 and Portland 102. We're coming right back. leading the Trailblazers 113 to 102. If you watched the basketball show earlier today, you saw Spurs owner Red McCombs talking about the cattle sale out at his ranch today. First one you've ever missed. You decided to come to the game instead. Any regrets? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I just couldn't change a thing in the world today. Have you heard anything from how the sale's going? I haven't even thought about that cattle sale, and I'm not going to for about another hour. I'm going to enjoy this. All right, we've enjoyed it too. Thanks a lot. Back out to you guys. Thank you, Andrea. Red asked me if I was interested in buying anything. I said, I'll just buy it at the hamburger store instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it already done. Thank you. <laughs> Red is as delighted as anyone to have seen the resurgence here in San Antonio. Porter misses the first. The Phoenix Suns have beaten the Lakers 117-103 to grab a two games to one lead in that series. One thirteen, one oh three, ten point lead, 50 seconds to go. Robinson to Wingate to Reggie Williams. That's how you break the press, but I was gonna say Portland's gotta get to the point. They wanna do something, they gotta start fouling. Petrovic. Gets it away too hard. That one out of bounds belongs to San Antonio. And coming off the bench now, Sean Elliott and Johnny Moore. Terry Cummings coming. Terry Cummings. They got two great players that going off the court. Terry Cummings had 11 rebounds, four assists to go along with 35 points. He was the guy that made it happen for the Spurs today. And David Robinson did a great job protecting the middle. Just never let Portland get into the floor of the game. That went out of bounds to Portland. David Robinson, 21 points, 10 rebounds, and four blocked shots. Our Miller Lite player of the game today is Terry Cummings of the San Antonio Spurs. Great numbers and all at the right time, too. Light beer, proud to present a check for $1,000 on behalf of Terry Cummings to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. OTC had some good years in Milwaukee. I happened to watch him there, boy, but he's, I'm telling you, he's really solidified this team. He, He's this person, much like Buck Williams, strong of character. He, he, that's one of the things that I thought he would bring to the San Antonio Spurs. And I think Larry Brown has done a great job in blending his offensive skills into what San Antonio tries to get done. Portland will contemplate game five Tuesday night in Portland. The amazing thing about the Spurs team, 10 new faces of the 12 on the roster from last year. And I think that's a real credit to, to Larry Brown and his coaching staff to be able to get those guys to play together in, in such short time. Taken away by Kersey. His pass up ahead. Out of bounds. With a second and a fraction remaining.
115 to 105. San Antonio pulls even at two games apiece with the Portland Trailblazers. The NBA tap into the cold. U.S. Sprint and its new world of telecommunications. And by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports.